Hi, what's going on, y'all? This is be your boy Scotty, and you're watching a review of Love and Hip Hop Hollywood Season 5, Episode 2. This was another great episode. Me and Jamar was texting the whole time during this damn episode, and we were just sitting up here like, bitch, is um, Love and Hip Hop Hollywood the new sis? Because Atlanta is shook, baby, and I'm just like, yes, like me and Jamar was texting throughout that whole damn episode, okay? And it's just, you know, my friend got some good news, though. I'm not going to tell y'all, though. He probably already said something about it already, but I'm not going to say nothing about his good news until he come back. Because he is going to be reviewing Love & Hip Hop Hollywood, but, you know, he just having a little bit of difficulty doing it. And I got nothing to do with his equipment or nothing like that, but he got some good news. And um, I'm so happy for my friend. But let's just get into the review. Let's just start it off with Lyrica, Brooke, and Princess. Lyrica up there performing some song. Now she wants to be a rapper after she cries, as she got crying as a singing voice. She wants to get up and rap and shit. So while she's up there rapping, you know, um, she goes down there. You know, my girl Brooke is in the house. Princess is in the house. And Brooke and Princess, you know, they hug and they embrace because they don't really know each other. So... You know, Lyrica says, so what's been going on with you and Marcus? Because Princess noticed that this big ass ring on um on Brooke's finger. And Brooke was like, basically, me and Marcus are engaged, but he don't know that we engaged. So when she said that, I'm like, Brooke, girl, what? What you mean you engaged and, and a nigga don't know that y'all engaged? You know what I mean? I ain't never heard no shit like that. But basically, when he came to Houston to visit her mama, he had an engagement ring. She practically stole it and put it on her finger because she already knew that Marcus was going to marry her. So basically, she got this whole engagement plan in her head and Marcus don't know shit about it. Brooke, you are too beautiful for the bullshit, okay? So, then Princess goes on and she's talking about Ray J and how Ray J has been gone for six days straight. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why she posted the shit that she posted on Instagram to get his attention and all of that. And I'm like, but Princess, that's the child of shit that people be talking about. If you're married, and I know you are probably in your 30s, you can't be that much older than me because I'm 29. You're in your 30s and you're posting shit about your fucking marriage and you're doing this for his attention. But maybe if you would pick up the phone and maybe go the fuck off on him in that manner, maybe you would get his attention. But putting this shit out there on social media is not the way to handle it and I have been the king of putting shit on social media knowing that I, I ain't got no business putting it on social media. I know that I've been the king of doing that and I really try not to judge the next motherfucker for doing it because I myself have done it. So I can't judge nobody else for doing it but just because I did it don't make it right. So it ain't right princess. You know Ray J is a bum. He is a whack ass nigga. He is and he was a whack lame ass nigga when you decided to snatch him up from Tierra Marie and marry his ass. You already knew what you were getting yourself into so I don't even know why you're so surprised. So you're only making yourself look bad. And not only are you on social media coming for him, but you're also coming for his family too. You ain't doing yourself no favors. It's going to always look like you're the one that's at fault. So Brooke, uh, not Brooke, so Lyrica. Princess brought up the situation with Lyrica and K. Michelle because I remember seeing the tweets and all the shade they threw. And she said, well, you know, she called me about her rehearsal. Then she talked about me being late. Then she said my marriage was fake. And she said all of this bullshit. And then she said that I was trying to fuck Safari. Then that's when Brooke gave that look. And she was like, baby, I was with Lyrica and Safari. And Safari was flirting his ass off. And Lyrica did not stop it. And I'm like... Girl, the T, the T, the T. Now, everybody was mad with Kate Michelle last week because she put it out there. Now, Brooke didn't put it out there now. So, what y'all got to say about that? Because apparently, Kate Michelle like the only one with the T. And Brooke ain't the only one with the T either. Let's get back into the video. So, Ray J pulls up on Princess at Lyrica's, um, whatever she had. Lyrica's little show. And, um, he confronts her about the social media stuff. And, like, he said, you know, why are you going to social media putting our business out there? You know what I'm saying? Like, embarrassing me, embarrassing our family. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like you owe my family a public apology because not only are you making us look bad, but you making yourself look bad. You making our marriage look bad. You got the shade room picking up on shit. But... 
Honestly, I don't think that she owes the entire family anything because she's not married to the entire family. She's only married to Ray J. And the only person she really owes an apology to is Ray J because it's their marriage that she's fucking up by putting the shit out there on social media. It really is. And she needs to stop because that's childish as fuck. It really is. And that's just that. That's just the basis of the situation. Princess been childish. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, she dumb as hell for marrying the nigga that pushed her ass in the pool and almost made her ass drown. So, you know, she, you know, damn. Ray J, she tried to fight Ray J and Ray J pushed her ass so hard in that pool. Her ass was in Bikini Bottom with Squidward and fucking SpongeBob and Patrick. Like, that's just how hard he pushed her ass in the damn pool. But with that being said, y'all, that's the end of day drama. So, you know, A1 in the studio, you know, Auntie brags about how him and Lyrica had to drag K. Michelle for, for the bullshit that she did. Such a damn queen. But Mark is coming in. And you know, you know, they start talking about Brooke. And you know, she he said he ain't really dealing with the love triangle that was him, Brooke, and Booby. Now he's got a lot of other, you know, options, and they're all getting serious. You know what I'm saying? He got some serious options. But he wanted to talk about how Miss A1 has turned into Twitter fingers. So, you know, he was like, you know, I went over to K Michelle because, you know, she did some foul shit to Lyric because she coming to Hollywood thinking she's gonna turn up and, you know, do do all this damage to folks or whatever. And then the next day, you know, she says, you know, Lyrica tried to fuck Safari. That's when Margie was like, oh, damn, bro. Because, you know, Brooke told me that Lyrica and Safari. And I'm like, no, nah, nah. Marcus know the tea, too. So, there's three people. K. Michelle, Marcus, and Brooke. Now, three people know the motherfucking tea about Lyrica and Safari. Now, when it came from K. Michelle... A1 was not really trying to hear that shit because it came from K. Michelle, a bitch that's fuck this feuding with Lyrica at this point. So he wasn't trying to hear it from her. But when his homeboy told her and his homeboy woman was pillow talking, telling him the tea, oh, he knew he had to confront Lyrica. And I'm just like, this whole sabotage Lyrica storyline is so fucking funny to me, y'all. Because I don't like Lyrica. I don't really give a fuck what happens to her ass. I just don't like her. Okay? But... K. Michelle and Bridget Kelly, they meet up um, for the situation. You know, meet up for at a spa, and you know, um, K. Michelle was like, you know, so you know that orange headed ass girl. She talking about Lyrica, Miss Crayola, and um, you know, she basically said, you know, what she said that I was fake, and then I told her that her marriage was fake. Now, K. You know that ain't how that happened. She said you gotta fake it till you make it. And you said I'm not going to fake shit like your marriage. So maybe you got those misconstrued because you was already pissed and all 100 already. But she didn't call you fake first. She said you got to fake it till you make it. And then you said that her marriage was fake. Now, okay, girl. But anyway, so they talk about that. And that's when Bridget brings up the Paris thing. And how she gave Paris K. Michelle's number. And how, you know, she wants her and Paris to make things right. And, you know, K. was like, you know, it's not really about the $50. It's about the principle. You took my, you used my car without my permission. You know what I mean? And that's just what it is. And honestly, I can't really be mad at K. I mean, at the end of the day, I don't give a fuck if it's $2. It's my money. If you didn't ask me for it, then you, <laughs> you, you steal it. Basically, I mean, let's just be real. It's just like. If I'm at work and the bitch leave her Starburst out and I give one of her Starbursts out of her Starburst thing, I'm stealing her candy. Like, that's just what it is. If you took something without asking for it, that's pretty much stealing. That's just what it is. So, Apple. She reach out to Lyrica so she can apologize for the situation that went down between her and A1. You know, she was like, I'm a stripper. I sold my body. I'm just trying to get my thing together you know i'm a rap i'm a stripper turned rapper but i just want to be known for more than just stripping i want to be taken seriously as a musician and you know miss produce here is giving me a bit of like i said great value tiana taylor a little bit of rashida and a dash of mama jones aka jim jones mama that's what the fuck kiwi is giving me right now and you know lyrical was like well you know there were rumors out about me not wanting anyone to work with women, with other women. And it wasn't that. It's just that I wasn't finished with my album. Bitch, stop lying because you did not want that man to be working with other women. Stop lying. 
You straight up cut up a fool last season when he was trying to work with Ty Dolla Sign's sister, bitch. Who the fuck you think you fooling? You're not innocent, nor are you perfect. Bitch, you did not want him working with other women on it. Like, why are you lying? That's why I don't like that bitch. She always want to, ooh, I don't like that bitch. So, that's when Queen A1 walks into the building. And that's when, um, Collard Green was, was like, you know what, let me go. I just came up here to, you know, talk to Lyrica just to make things right with her. I didn't want her to feel disrespected by me. But let me get the fuck out of here because the, the tension is on 10. So A1 says, so what the fuck going on with you and Safari? She said, well, you know, I text him, you know, we're, we're cool. He's the homie. He's, you know, he chills out with, with, with the both of us. What's going on? So he was like, well, you know, K. Michelle told me that you was trying to fuck Safari. And when he said that K. Michelle told him that... She straight up went the fuck off. She throwing drinks. She storming out. She yelling and screaming. Acting like a whole guilty ass bitch. And when he asked her for her cell phone. And there were no messages in that thread between her and Safari. I'm like, ah! This bitch is guilty as a motherfucker. Because she want to say, oh, I don't keep my texts. Okay, you and A1 married. And he don't know that you don't keep your text messages. Like, come on now. Like, he don't know that shit about you. Come on now, you deleted them messages. It's mighty convenient that you don't keep your messages now that you're accused of, a, of the crime of fucking Safari or wanting to fuck Safari. And now you done went out there, you done stomped your feet, you doing all this screaming, talking about how you gonna fuck K. Michelle on site, but when you saw her on site, you didn't do shit when she hit your ass with that stool. You didn't do a motherfucking thing. Just like you didn't do a motherfucking thing to my niece last season. Lyrica, you not fooling nobody, you ain't shit. The only person that's really about their life is your mama because you ain't about shit, bitch. Okay, then you come in and you steady going on and on and on and on and on about how you going to beat K. Michelle ass on site when you see it. But then you turn around and find out that other people know, bitch. It ain't just K, girl. Brooke know and Marcus know, bitch. And I forgot to mention it, but Bridget Kelly know too. Four motherfuckers know and you want to sit up here and try to be mad at one damn person. Now your ass looks stupid. But Lyrica, girl, it's okay. We all want to fuck Safari. It's okay, girl. Like, it's really okay. If you want to fuck that nigga, we understand, girl. We really do. Like, you ain't got to be that mad, girl. We understand that you want to fuck him. Who wouldn't want to fuck Safari? Have you seen him? Have you seen what the fuck he working with? Who wouldn't want to fuck Safari? I don't want to fuck Safari, okay? So that's just what it is. So, girl, stop. Now she's talking about she's going to stay with her mama. Girl, please. So, Brooke, Paris, and Princess. Um, there is some event that Donatella is hosting. And, um, you know, Paris tell Brooke and Princess that, you know, Bridget Kelly, you know, gave me Kay's number. And everybody wants me and Kay to, you know, solve our differences, bury the hatchet. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we were friends. But I don't know if even if I do bury the hatchet with her. I may still be called a thief. You know, I'm tired of being called a thief. You know what I'm saying? So, that's when, you know, Princess tell Brooke and Paris about her situation with Ray J and how, you know, he was gone for six days. She got all these messages from all these random ass bitches in her DMs and they sent her pictures and she sent them to Brandy and then, you know, Brandy went off on her. You know what I'm saying? So, Princess is highly upset with the situation. But my thing of it is, though, Princess, my, I don't like you. God knows I don't. I don't like you at all. But the thing that I really fought you for is putting your shit on social media for the world to see it. You didn't even have to do that. You could have handled that shit between you and Ray J and it would have been fine. But now... You got the shade room involved. You got the fans involved. You got your family involved. You got his family. Everybody involved because you put it out there. And me and one of my friends had this conversation tonight. Some shit you just don't talk about with everybody. If you're having problems with your man, sometimes you don't need to tell your friends or your family about the problems with your man. Sometimes you don't need to put it on social media that you're having issues with your man. Because when you're putting shit out there about you and your man, you're giving everybody leeway. Whoever want to fuck Ray J. You know, and I don't blame them for wanting to fuck Ray J either. But when you're dealing with Ray J and you're putting it out there that y'all having issues, of course a, a, a cum bucket going to want to fuck your man. They probably been waiting to fuck Ray J. I mean, come on. So you putting yourself out there, not only putting yourself out there, but you putting your marriage out there too. Up for grabs. That's what you're doing and you don't realize it. So that's when Brooke turns around and she sees Marcus at the same event. 
Marcus with his fine self waiting on somebody to come to the bar, but the person that comes to the bar is Brooke. Next thing you know, Marcus like, I wasn't expecting Brooke to be here, like, for real, for real. Then that's when this cute girl named Stassi comes up. And apparently, did, um, not Dennis, apparently Marcus been fucking with her too. So it's like, well, I can't say Marcus is fine, Brooke is fine, Stassi is fine. What a great th threesome that might be. i watch. But at the end of the day, he fucked up. Well, Brooke, you told him that he can do him. You didn't tell him about y'all was going to be engaged. And this girl is blindsided because she don't know nothing about nothing. Like, you telling her about all these holidays you spent with this nigga. But at the end of the day, the other girl don't know that. So, you making yourself look stupid. Because you all make yourself look stupid anyway, uh, Brooke, by proposing to yourself. And then on top of that, now you fucking with this girl. Like, Marcus. And Marcus, you dumb for even thinking that you keeping yourself out of drama when you fucking with Brooke and you fucking with another bitch. So, but at the same time though, Brooke. He kind of playing them same games that you played all last season with Booby and him. Because one minute you want to marry Marcus, but when you find out about that paralegal bitch, then you ran over there to Booby. Now, you know what I'm saying, that Booby's out of the picture, you want to be with Marcus, but Marcus don't for ain't forgot about the Booby shit, so now he's just doing it, he playing the game that you played. But I realize like, you played the game with him last season because he did this shit with Jay, so he was obviously lying anyway. But both of y'all been doing this childish ass connect for tiff attack candy lane ass bullshit ass games, and y'all over 30, just like I'm about to be 30. So y'all need to quit it with the fuck shit. For real. That's just childish. So a1 is supposedly doing a video for his new single. I don't know the name of it. And you know he's not feeling the shoot. So, you know, he invites Broccoli Watts to, you know, to come see him at, at this video shoot and see um, how the industry really is. You know, let her get a real taste of what the industry is. So, you know, she's there. You know, she's chilling. Ray J comes. Um... You know, they introduced themselves to, you know, um, Dragon Fruit. And um, next thing you know, they start talking about Lyrica. But when they start talking about Lyrica, that's when um, Strawberry decide, okay, look, I'm finna go. I'm finna go, you know. And one thing I like about Miss Grape is that she can walk away at the right moment every time. Miss Cantaloupe knows she be knowing when the tea about to be spilled. Miss Honeydew Miller be like, look, let me tell you something. I'm finna go because this ain't got shit to do with me, so let me go. So, you know what I'm saying. After um, Sweet Kale decided to leave, that's when A1 tells Ray J that he heard from Marcus, from Brooke, from K. Michelle, that, you know, Lyrica and Safari was fucking. And, you know, Ray J feel like, you know, that's the homie, that's the brother, you know what I'm saying? I don't think he'll do something like that. I think you just need to ask him because I do know that Safari coming up here for a show with K. Michelle. So, you know, he feel like he need to confront him about it. Paris comes into a studio to meet up with K. Michelle. Now, I have several opinions about this. Um, K. Michelle feels some type of way because Paris used her car without asking. It was on fraud alert, so she didn't know if someone that she didn't know was still in her car or not. Paris didn't think that it was a malicious type of thing. K. Michelle said that she was hurt by Paris because of the simple fact that she stole some money from her. But Paris feels like she's gotten the short end of the stick because she's being called a thief. And nobody wants to hire a thief. And honestly, all I'm going to say is this. K. Michelle got every right to be upset with Paris. But at the same time, the way that K. Michelle handled it was detrimental for Paris. Because at the end of the day, that's your best friend. You love her like a sister. But when you got mad with her, you was quick to blast her for being a thief. And that's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because just being me, I don't give a damn how mad I am about what a friend did. If it's something that I know is going to be detrimental to them and their character and their reputation, I'm just not going to blast them on my platform. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't do that. 
I never do that to anyone that I fuck with or used to fuck with, you know. And I know I'm going to get some snide remarks about how, oh, Scotty, if such and such wanted to be your friend again, you would take the opportunity. God knows I wouldn't. Y'all don't know me. Y'all really don't know me like you think you do. But, you know, I do get it. It was detrimental. And I see people coming on the Paris comments all the time calling her a damn thief. Oh, what? Well, ain't you the fat bitch that stole from K. Michelle? Ain't you a thief? I, I, I see that all the time. So I do understand both ends. You know what I'm saying? I do understand why K. Michelle is hurt because, you know, all you had to do was ask me. Like, you ain't got to use my car without permission. And I understand Paris because this whole thing has haunted her for the, like, for the last four years. Everybody been calling her a thief. So, you know, I understand it from both ends, and I'm glad that they buried that. But with the recent stuff I've been seeing with Zell Swag and the shit he's been saying in regards to Kay and Paris, this ain't over with. So, it's the gender reveal, and you know, everything seems happy at first. But then Ray J pulls Princess over to Sonya and Brandy, and they discuss the issues. So... Princess is really annoyed with Sonya, and Sonya is not here for Princess, period. You know, Sonya feels like Princess should have never brought the family business to the social media, and I highly believe that, too. You know, and I'm his mother, so don't you never forget it. And, um, you know, Princess was going back and forth with, you know, Sonya. And I see a lot of people, and they come for candy, and they talk about how she need to put Mama Joyce in her place, which is true, she do. But I need y'all to have that same energy with Ray J. Because y'all know I love me some Sonya. But Ray J need to put a muzzle on Sonya. Because she's doing way too much. She's getting herself involved in things that has absolutely nothing to do with her. She need to stay the fuck out of it. Like I get that this is your son situation. And you don't like how she approached it. But it's none of your business. Then on top of that. Princess was just coming for Sonya and Brandy. Like, it was crazy. Like, she pretty much called Brandy off of being fake. Like, pretty much. Like, she said she wants to be the sister in law of the year, but she's attacking me through text messages. You know what I'm saying? So, she really called Brandy's bluff. And I'm sitting up here like, God damn. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, Lyrica and Brooke brings the damn hood to the gender reveal. So now Lyrica is on this war path to confront anybody that ever said that she wanted Big Dick Safari. Now she on the now she on the hunt for anybody that said it. Brooke was unbothered. Brooke was not phased. She throwing, you know, when Brooke said you fucked them, didn't you? Lyrica got quiet and started throwing stuff at Brooke. Brooke ain't flinching. Then she tried to flip over the table. Brooke still didn't flinch. She got a side nigga and a husband. She lit. And you are, girl. You got a lesbian lover and a big, big man right on your side, girl. I wish I was you. I wish I was you because you got it. Because you really pimping, pimping, bitch. You pimping, pimping. I don't know what you heard about me. But a one can't get a dollar out of me. No Cadillac, no birds you can't see. Lyrica's a motherfucking P-I-M-P. Go ahead, Lyrica, with your stinking ass. Go ahead, bitch. Next thing you know, after the whole Lyrica and Brooke thing, they are A1, Misa with Safari, and they standing in between, well, uh, broke down ass Honda Accord is in between them. Whose car was that? And A1 comes in, taking off his shit like the real queen that he is. You know, taking off his, you know, coming out of his heels, pulling his hair back, taking off all his jewelry. And he asked Safari what the fuck he doing texting his wife. Safari was like, bitches like me. And if she like me, he was like, oh, bitches like you, son. Bitches like you, bro. Bitches like you. Now they want to run up on each other. Love and hip hop Hollywood's the shit, baby. I cannot get enough of it. I'm already ready for Monday. Already ready. All my social media is at the bottom. Stay tuned for my basketball wives with you guys. And the king is up out of here. I have a lot coming up with my channel. Some of my Team Scotty members already know. If you are in the DMs of my Instagram, you already know what I plan to do. I have a, I'm trying to revamp my channel. I got a lot of things that I want to do. Um, once the main thing that I want comes through, we'll officially be in revamp mode. And I'm out of here, you guys. Till next time. I'll holla. Peace.